so now we have come to the important part of the our uh, lecture that is significance of msms in the indian economy so we have already seen it holds a lot of importance uh, we will now uh, now understand how this sector holds lot of importance when it comes to indian economy right so this sector i mean the indian economy overall if you see it is one of the fastest growing economies uh, for that matter we can say it is the fastest growing larger economy fastest growing larger economy in the world right good morning students welcome back to pluto sas right today is our 51st day right we have completed half of the topics that we have decided uh, right so i hope you are finding the videos useful and i hope that you will be benefited from the videos whatever uh, the classes we are uh, doing right so today we will begin the second half in our series of lectures that are uh, i mean the special focus here is on prelims examination right so today we will study about the msmes uh, micro small and medium enterprises right so this is a very very important uh, topic not only for the uh, not only from the prelims point of view but also from the mains point of view also because uh, this is a very important area when it comes to economics and especially employment employment in rur uh, rural areas so this uh, sector plays a very important role in creating or generating employment in rural areas and providing livelihood to many number of people so we can say after the agriculture after the agriculture this sector is very very important we can say it is the second most important sector in the rural areas so if uh, we are discussing its importance in the context of rural areas but its contribution is uh, not less when it comes to urban areas also uh, we will see many urban people uh, they are self employed they will be doing various activities so all these all those self employment activities they come under the micro uh, or we can say uh, msme sector so it holds a lot of importance so this is one importance and the second thing is it faces lot of challenges we will understand uh, later in this lecture how the micro uh, msme sector is important because uh, in terms of we can say uh, manufacturing exports and when it uh, in the terms of contribution to gdp it holds lot of signif uh, significance one more important thing is uh, thing is they are very uh, or we can say they are not capital intensive not capital intensive what it means it means that these enterprises do not require lot of capital with small capital only these industries or we can say these enterprises can be established uh, with small capital only the production is higher uh, compared to big industries and uh, they have lot of employment potential potential also so with only small uh, capital we are creating one side uh, production we are uh, doing good production at the second side we are uh, generating lot of employment so the twin benefits there are twin benefits from this sector so because of all these reasons it holds lot of significance however the potential of msme sector has not been realized properly because they face n number of problems there are lot of challenges they 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 are they are facing lot of challenges including technology access to credit uh, they are unable to meet the whatever the regulatory framework or regu uh, regulations are there they are unable to comply because of various reasons because many of the people who are running these micro enterprises are often illiterate or not that much educated so they cannot comply with all all the rules and regulations uh, like filing the gst returns etc so there are problems so credit is also one of the other major problems 
the availability of formal credit from the formal institutions like uh, banks etc so the credit is not available uh, though it is uh, even in certain cases the credit is available it is not sufficient so like this there are many other problems we will also see those problems right so uh, so when it comes to mains there may be a question on the problems of the msmes problems of msmes and the question can also be focused on what are the possible solutions for addressing challenges that are faced by the uh, msme sector so this is a very very important uh, topic try to focus right first we will understand the definition of the msme sector so msme means it will be having three components that is micro enterprises small enterprises and medium enterprises so combinedly this sector is known as the msme sector or some i mean some people call uh, the there is another vocabulary uh, that is in book that is smes small and medium enterprises here the micro enterprises will be uh, left out however if you see the data the micro enterprises in the total msme sector micro and the number if you see the number is number of micro enterprises is almost 97% only the small and medium enterprises comprise only 3% so the in the msme sector also the micro enterprises are very much very much dominant right so uh, from the time being i mean uh, from the as the time passes by the definition of micro small and uh, medium enterprises it kept on changing because it is decided on the one thing uh, investment investment or we can say paid up capital right so uh, there have been recently there have been changes in the 2020 so along with the paid up capital or investment turnover turnover also included in the criterion for defining the micro small and medium enterprises so the definition kept on varying because as you all know because of the inflation and uh, because of many other reasons the value actual value of money keeps on changing so because of that reason the definition of micro uh, msme is also kept on changing however uh, at present we are following the definition that has been changed or redefined uh, in the 2020 so basically we follow two types of de uh, definitions one thing is the definition based on the investment or paid up capital right so what investment means investment refers to the allocation of funds with the anticipation of deriving some benefit out of that business operations right there is second definition that is based on the definition based on the turnover Tur turnover is nothing but the gross business that has been done by a particular company or organization right it represents the total revenue generated from the provision of goods and services calculated after deducting the trade discounts taxes uh, any other expenses etc so in definition of the micro small and uh, medium enterprises we define uh, through both these def uh, we can say definitions so if we see the investment the definition based on the investment the micro enterprises is uh invest means less the investment is less than or equal to less than or equal to 1 crore rupees of investment small enterprises so uh, uh investment is less than 10 crore rupees or i mean it is between the investment is between 1 crore and 10 crore rupees similarly medium enterprises where the investment is between 10 crore and 50 crores so this is the definition based on the investment so the msmes they have also been defined based on the turnover so if the turnover is less than or equal to 5 crore it is known as the micro enterprise so if the investment is 
or sorry the turnover is between 5 crore and 50 crore it is known as the uh, small enterprise if the investment is between 50 crore and 250 crores it is known as the uh, medium enterprise so it is if the investment exceeds 50 crores it becomes the uh, major enterprise or we can say big enterprise so here the, if the turnover exceeds 250 crores it becomes the big enterprise or major enterprise right so this is the definition of the uh, micro medium uh, and small enterprises so try to remember them there may be a question in the prelims about the slabs on uh, on basis based on which uh, there is a classification in the mains examination also if there is a question on the msmes so you can start the answer with the this classification of msmes right all right so uh, here a list of what all the things that have been included in the manufacturing sector so basically the msmes msmes broadly they will be in the secondary sector or we can say manufacturing sector and they will be in service sector also service sector also so earlier the definition whatever the definition we have seen the investment and the turnover these things were different for manufacturing msmes and the service msmes also however after the 2020 uh, 2020 uh, redefinition when the definition has been uh, redefined so this uh, the difference has been uh, done away with so now there is no difference between the manufacturing msmes and the service msmes uh, when we when we are defining them however we should be aware of what are the msmes uh, i mean the processes uh, under which the msmes are categorized under manufacturing msmes and uh, msmes that are working in the service sectors so there is a classification or division of the services uh, and manufacturing processes and the service processes you should be in a position to uh, differentiate between them right so if we broadly see the manufacturing processes making altering repairing ornamenting etc finishing packaging so these are the some of the processes similarly pumping oil water sewage and any other substance generating transforming transmitting or transmitting power uh, composing types of printing including printing methods like letter press lithography etc constructing reconstructing repairing refining uh, breaking up of ship vessels preserving or storing articles in cold storage so all these are uh manufacturing uh, come under the manufacturing sector so if we see the definition of service sector right so here the service sector involves providing tangible service intangible services intangible services means we cannot touch and we, i mean uh, touch those services they are intangible i mean they are not touchable so those uh, those are called as the uh, services so whereas the uh, services or goods provided in the manufacturing sector are they are tangible products we can touch them right so some of the processes included are retail services banking and financial services hospitality services uh, real estate services education and training services healthcare and social services computer and computer and information technology services entertainment and recreational services media and communication services so see these are the some of the processes or services included in the service sector all right all right so now we have come to the important part of the, our uh, lecture that is significance of msms in the indian economy so we have already seen it holds lot of importance uh, we will now uh, now understand how this sector holds lot of importance when it comes to indian economy right so this sector i mean the indian economy overall if you see it is one of the fastest growing economies uh, for that matter we can say it is the fastest growing larger economy fastest growing larger economy in the world right 
so this uh, in that fastest growing economy msme sector holding the second position in terms of employment generation so first sector is that is providing providing highest employment is agriculture sector agriculture sector it is uh, providing the highest uh, employment the second at the second position the msme sector is there so this is sector wise so previous classes in the previous classes we have seen when we were studying the industry wise so industry wise the textile industry cotton and textile industry it was providing the second highest employment so the agriculture if we see industry wise uh, we also consider agriculture as uh, industry so the agriculture it is providing the highest uh, number of employment the second industry was the uh, cotton and textile industry if we see the sector wise agriculture is providing the number one i mean agriculture is the number one uh, employer the second uh, employer is the msme sector right so try to remember these facts right so in this way msme plays a crucial role expanding the entrepreneurial so majority of the msmes are they are single person enterprises single person enterprises i mean the person who is uh, who is self employed so he is doing his own activities in a business like manner so in this way it is kindling the or expanding the entrepreneurial base so this is also one of the important aspects about msme sector All right All right so they serve those entrepreneurs they serve as manufacturers suppliers distributors retailers etc so there are many categories right so if we see the contribution of msme in the indian economy right so the msme sector uh, its share in gva and gdp has been consistently growing over the years so there we can see a break in the growth of the msme sector during the covid 19 time and also they have faced problems some problems during the uh, demonetization period monetization period so there are problems during the introduction of gst also however these problems have been overcome overcome after a brief period of time so in during these periods uh, during the introduction of gst because uh, G- gst what it tried is it tried to it also tried to formalize the msme sector so earlier earlier to gst they were not following the regulations that much however due to the introduc- introduction of computer based we can say compl- uh, compliance of rules and regulations so most of the msmes they could not comply so they had to f- face some problems uh, this is one thing about the gst and during the introduction of uh, or we can say during the demonetization uh due to lack of credit or we can say money they have suffered uh, somewhat and after during the covid also due to various reasons you know very well they have suffered so if we uh, we can say exclude these areas i mean these a brief uh, troublesome periods so the msme sector is experience a good growth we can say right so msme sector it accounts for 95% of the industrial units so rest of the 5% are major units so however 95% of the total industrial units are msmes and uh, 45% of the manufacturing output is coming from the msmes so 45% of the manufacturing is coming from the msmes so and uh, 40% of the total exports so whatever the exports we are made, making approximately 40% is contributed by the msme sector so here through this data you can understand the importance of the msme sector it is very very uh, important right so gdp uh, gdp contribution of the msme sector if you see in the recent years so it contributes it contributes to a substantial portion of the indian gdp although it has fluctuated slightly in recent years so if we see the uh, past 3 years uh, contribution to gdp uh, 30.5% uh, 27.29% uh, 
so it has reduced the contribution of uh, msme sector has reduced during the 2020-21 because the covid-19 and the lockdowns so the msme sector has been impacted so however in 2021-22 we can see a slight recovery and its contribution stands at 29.2% so approximately it is around contributing around 30% to the gdp All right now we will see the gva contributions so it plays a major role in the, when it comes to the gva contribution also so the gva contribution also it is approximately 30% right right so msmes have a strong presence in the manufacturing so we have seen msmes are working both in manufacturing and the service sector however their presence is very much strongly felt when it comes to uh, manufacturing gva so it is in the manufacturing gva it is contributing approximately 37 percent it is contributing to the manufacturing gva right so if we see the expected growth figures so the government aims to increase the msme sector's contribution uh, in the coming five years to 50 percent of the gdp along with a target of increasing the employment from 11 crores to 15 crores people so data suggests that uh, data shows that now the sector employs around 11 crore people 11 crore people in the msme sector so the government intends that the employment can uh, has to be reached to 15 crores in the coming years right so the strategy is employed employed by the government to increase the uh, we can say share in the gdp and also employment contribution through new funding channels making sector uh, ma making the sector investor friendly and promoting technological innovations reducing logistical costs and providing skilling and market support so here you can uh, grasp the problems faced by the msme sector also however we will discuss them in the later uh, later in this lecture so these are the possible solutions you can use them as possible solutions also so uh, by addressing these problematic areas the government wants to increase the share of the msme sector also there is a scope for diversification of the msme sector uh, with the new ventures emerging uh, in emerging areas like honey production bamboo so bamboo you know very well it has various applications uh, for bamboo products there are a lot of research is going on research and development is going on the products uh, through uh, bamboo they are keep i mean they are expanding uh, nowadays so we are trying to develop a bamboo based economy completely so that uh, the rural hinterland it can be developed right so in the biofuel production also there is a lot of scope for msmes fisheries dairy agarbatti making uh, hydroponics water transport etc so in all these areas there is a lot of scope for msme sector right so one of the other advantages of msme is less capital intensive and employment friendly so with msmes can be started with less capital so they are less capital intensive whereas if you see the uh, major industries or heavy industries they are capital intensive so yesterday when we were discussing the public sector enterprises pscs uh, we have studied that they are capital intensive so because they are capital intensive they are uh, they could not generate they could not generate employment as desired because so the capital intensive industries tend to be working more with the machines so wherever machines are the i mean dominant, dominant factor so they tend to be less employment we can say generated right so we can say this is one of the problem this is also one of the problems of the uh, public sector enterprises so the government earlier thought that they could generate lots of employment employment through the major industries or heavy industries however that goal could not be resolved uh, realized because 
the the uh, industries heavy industries that are planned by the government they become capital intensive and uh, uh, so subsequently they are failed to create sufficient number of employment okay. however there is a lot of scope in the msmes for generating employment so if we see the state wide distribution of uh, msmes uttar pradesh holds the largest uh, estimated number of msmes uh, you also remember this point that there are many number of msmes approximately the estimation is that uh, there are 3 crore msmes in the country however uh, the registration is approximately 60 lakh so around 60 lakh msmes have been uh, registered and they are uh, formally known to the government however it is estimated that around 3 crore msmes are there so it is it is believed or it is estimated that uttar pradesh holds the largest estimated number of um, uh, msmes closely followed by west bengal right so the top 10 states together account for approximately the uh, significant share approximately 73 to 74 percent of the total msmes in the country right so potential if you see if the sector has potential to emerge as the backbone of the indian economy so at the present day we call the agriculture sector as the backbone of the indian economy because largest number of people more than 50% of the people are dependent on the agriculture sector so we call that as the backbone of indian economy however uh, with proper support and guidance the msme sector can become the backbone of indian economy generating a huge gdp i mean contributing hugely to the gdp and also in terms of employment right so uh, often the economists call the uh, i mean call for shifting the excess population or we can say excess number of workforce in the agriculture sector so experts talk about shifting this excess number of uh, excess workforce from uh, agriculture sector to industrial sector so i mean it can be made possible by shifting uh, these people or we can say labor force from agriculture sector to the msme sector msme sector because this sector requires low skilled workers so not high skilled workers but low skilled uh, workers so by uh, briefly skilling them or we can say by uh, i mean slightly skilling the people uh, who are dependent on agriculture sector we can shift that workforce to the msme sector so it is very difficult to shift those extra uh, excess workforce to big industry because big industries require highly skilled workforce highly skilled workforce whereas uh, the msme sector either it is manufacturing sector or the service sector by briefly skilling uh, the excess labor force in the agriculture we can shift them into msme sector because that sector requires low skilled uh workers only so that can be made possible so in this way it can become the backbone of the indian economy right right now we will see the employment in the msme sector right so it is the one of the uh largest creator of employment opportunities in the country it is one of the largest creators of employment we have seen that creating both self employment and wage employment second only to the agriculture right so this sector is characterized by low capital uh, output and capital labor ratios so with the small capital only one side it is producing more on the other side it is uh, generating employment so the capital to output ratio is also less means for a certain uh, amount of production it is comparatively using lesser capital so similarly by using lesser capital only it is creating more number of jobs so in this way it has low capital to production ratio and also low capital to employment ratio also so this is the advantage of the msme sector right so when it compared to large scale industries the uh, the msme sector has these benefits low capital to production ratio and low capital to labor ratios right next is over the years msme sector uh, in india 
it ha- witnessed a significant growth uh, before the covid uh, we can say it has witnessed significant growth with annual average growth rate of 4.4% uh, in the number of units and 4.62% in employment since 1960s currently employing employing approximately approximately employing 10 crore people so however the government intends that the employment generation has to be i mean governments wants to take up the employment generation to 15 crores in the msme sector all right so uh, not only in terms of uh, contribution to employment but uh, but it also plays a significant role in the control uh, control of distressed migration in the rural areas so distress migration in rural areas so distress uh, migration is uh, happens when a farmer or uh, a person in the rural area leaving because of the lack of opportunities lack of opportunity in the rural area so generally we are uh, nowadays seeing the distress migration person in the rural area is he is leaving the village and uh, going to towns big towns uh, because there are no livelihood opportunities in the rural area so to escape poverty and hunger they are migrating to bigger cities and they are employed in employed as construction workers and they are doing other manual works so this is i mean the this is the scenario that is there in the rural areas so the msm is they can play a crucial role or they are playing a crucial role in arresting this kind of distress migration because the presence of msm is we see they are highly i mean they are highly present in the rural areas in the hinterland right so they play a crucial role in industrial industrialization of the rural and the backward areas and thereby reducing the regional imbalances and ensuring more equitable distribution of national income and wealth so in this way they prevent the distress migration also right so now we will see the 73rd round of uh, we can say national sample survey organizations data is available when it comes to msmes we will uh, see about the data right so it is uh, through the 73rd round we have found find, uh, found out that approximately 11 crore 10 to 11 crore people have been employed in the sector right all right so they uh, apart from that the msm is uh, if we see under it uh, in the msm is the micro sector it comprises uh, are uh, accounted for 97% of the total employment in the sector providing jobs to uh, approximately 10 crore people uh meanwhile the employment shares of the small and medium sectors small and medium sectors it is approximately 2.88% and 0.16% so here also in the employment generation you can see the domination of the micro enterprises so within the category of msmes you will see the dominance of the micro sector so it is contributing to approximately 97% of the employment generated by the msme sector so if we see the sector wise uh, employment generation in the msme sectors so <coughs> manufacturing it is approximately 32% trade it is 35% other services 33% electricity it is a near zero right so all the total 100% so the employment i mean if we see the individual category uh, electricity it is negligible rest three dominating areas if we see those are manufacturing trade and other services right so if we see the latest available data that is through the udyami registration portal data right so over it says that over 15 crore people 15.5 uh, crore people they have employed in the msme sector as of december 2023 so try to know about the uh, latest data and the figures also so that you can quote the in the examination mains examination when you are writing the answer however along with the data uh, data you have to quote the source of the data also so without quoting the source of the data there will 
there is not that much value for the data you are putting so remember this data it is available available from the national sample survey organization uh, 73rd round so this data it is coming from the udyami portal udyami registration portal data so this uh, portal is saying uh, saying that approximately 15 crore people have been employed in the msme sector All right so if we see the component of msmes in the total exports so the approximately it's a share is hovering around 40% so in the total exports of the country the msme sector is contributing approximately 40% so there is a slight change according to the i mean in the years we have that uh, we are seeing uh, and also during the covid also so there are slight changes but if we see as a average so it is contributing approximately 40% to the total uh, sectors so here you can see over the years how its share is uh, changing so during some years like 2015 16 16 17 and 17 uh, 18 so it came to approximately 50% the total contribution in the exports it has come to 50% however after uh, Uh, if we see the re- uh, recent years again so there is a gradual decline due to various reasons including the covid related covid related uh, we can say disturbances so if we see the possible reasons for declining in the recent years so several factors are there that is increased competition from the global market uh, impact of the pandemic on msmes so there is a huge impact on the msmes during the covid-19 pandemic right other factor can be difficulty for msmes to access resources for export related activities such as financing logistics etc right so another factor could be limited visibility into actual figures so we have seen that there are lot of problems when it comes to reporting and uh, following the regulations for the msmes because they, because they are small units they do not have the wherewithal and the technology to comply with the regulations so that could also be one reason for this decline in the contribution right right so now we will compare the msme sector with the overall industrial sector uh, so till now we have seen the contribution in employment contribution in exports now we will see the contribution in overall industrial sector right so the msme sector it showed improvement to growth performance during 2003 to 2009 uh, recording growth rates of over 10% in 2008-9 so you can see uh, during this period only 2008-9 uh, for that matter during uh, 2000 we can say 14 15 to uh, sorry 2004 5 to 2008-9 india has witnessed approximately 9% gdp growth rate so that was the booming period for india so in uh, 2007 the recession has occurred in united states of america so by 2008 and 9 it's uh, spread to other countries like india also so the growth rates have affected from then since then and subsequently the msme sector also bear the bear the brunt of the recession right so during the uh, because of the 2008 global financial crisis msme's growth declined sharply hovering around 4 to 7% so the with the overall economy also that uh, thing has happened uh, the growth rates uh, growth rates have fallen drastically the same thing happened with the msme sector also so this is about the trends in the employment generation trends in the exports and the trends in the overall growth rates right now we will see the uh, issues and challenges faced by the msme sector so this is uh, not only important from the point of view of prelims but also important from the main point of view also so try to remember the challenges faced by the msme sector the solutions possible solutions we will briefly uh, discuss here i mean the initiatives that have been taken by the government so when we discuss the main topics we will comprehensively discuss the solutions what needs to be done to resolve the problems of the msme sector right the problems if you see the we can say minor problems or short term problems if you see 
uh one of the problems is under utilization of equity financing this is one problem next is delayed payments so whatever the goods and services provided by the msme sector they are receiving delayed payments so to address this government has uh, i mean initiated a program so that the <coughs> repayments to the msme sector can be uh, prioritized prioritized however we can say only uh, little progress in that area still the msme suffer from delayed payments next one is lack of infor- lack of information regarding markets etc this is also another hindrance credit risk assessment so there is no proper credit risk assessment when it comes to msmes right so because uh, absence of the credit risk assessment the banks will not come forward to lend the loans to the or advance the loans to the msme sector next is lower utilization of credit guarantee schemes so the government has brought in several credit guarantee schemes means so the government will guarantee the guarantee will act as the guarantor for the loans advanced to the msme sector however the msmes have failed to utilize this credit guarantee funds created by the government right next we will see the major challenges or long term challenges one thing is lack of adequate capital and the credit yes we have seen this they suffer from the insufficient capital and also uh, the formal credit sources are not that ava- da- not that much available so traditionally the dependent on the other sources non institutional sources for the credit right poor infrastructure this also you know so marketing infrastructure logistics and also if we see the machinery also so the proper infrastructure is not available to them like next is limited market linkages so they they suffer from the market linkages also so once the goods or services are produced uh, it becomes uh, difficult for them to sell or market those services next is skilled human resources so semi skilled or partially skilled workforce is required so when it comes to the management of msme high, highly skilled people are required so sometimes they also suffered uh, from the lack of availability of skilled manpower all right next is limited access to technology so this is the one of the important areas where the msme suffer because of the obsolete technology or lack of advanced technology so if we have to address this area also next is regulatory hurdles so this is also one of the problematic area for msmes so cumbersome regulatory practices are there such as related to loans collateral permits insolvency resolution and the taxation all these they delay the business process so because the people who are managing the msmes they are not that much well educated they i mean also all these process processes are now have been linked to computerization so because of the i mean uh, difficulties like uh, purchasing the computer equipment etc so the msmes they are unable to comply with all these regulations so that is also hindering their uh, we can say performance right right so you also have to know about the impact of introduction of gst gst goods and services tax and also the we can say demonetization on the msme sector so demonetization if you see it has a significant impact on the msme sector so according to the one report rbi report uh, 2017 uh, sectors relying heavily on the contractual labor such as msmes uh, 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 such as wearing apparel and gems and jewelry they experienced constraints in payments from employees post demonetization right so this is the report given by the rbi so basically the msmes they have suffered some de- uh, we can say discomfort when it comes to payments etc uh, so it has we can say it has for a shorter period it negatively impacted the sector so introduction of gst so the introduction of gst services also affected msmes compliance cost 
and other operating expenses they have increased for msme sectors as many of them were brought into the tax net under the gst so they have to purchase computer and printing printing equipment uh, so that they have i mean they can file the gst returns so this has increased their uh, cost of doing doing business right <coughs> however uh, these things these efforts demonetization and introduction of gst they have benefited the msme sector in the long term right so the structural reforms like demonetization and the gst they have disrupted the performance of msmes in the shorter run however in the long run these reforms are expected to benefit the msmes so growth in digitization and the enhanced ease of doing business they are expected they are the expected outcomes creation of databases of transactions is anticipated which would facilitate better access to finance of msmes right so these are some of the expected benefits in the long run however we can say in the shorter run both these initiatives that are a gst introduction of gst and uh, demonetization they have uh, affected negatively the msme sector now we will understand the initiatives that are taken by the government to address the challenges of the msme sector so remember here i am not including the schemes or measures uh, that have been taken by the government uh, for the improvement of the msme sector you try to cover those schemes and initiatives in the uh, current affairs uh, preparation so so to avoid the duplication and uh, if you see the prelims questions also the questions are not entirely based on the uh, current affairs so you should be knowing majority uh, majority part of the background of those uh, things also so here through this lectures i am trying to give that 70 75 a of area that is required to answer a questions through these lectures right so policy initiatives if you see the, uh, by the government so first important policy that is the enactment of msmed act so uh, micro small and medium enterprises development act 2016 so it is aimed to create conducive environment for msme sector so through this act only for the first time a proper uh, we can say formal definition has been given to the uh, msme enterprises right so also apart from that the msme act included msme d act included creation of national board for msmes uh, recognition of the concept of enterprise this has been done and empowerment of central government to undertake programs to enhance the uh, competitiveness of the msme enterprises right apart from that a separate ministry has been created for msmes that is ministry of msme in 2007 this is also we can say one of the breakthrough initiatives by the government right next is many statutory and non statutory bodies have been created to improve the we can say conditions of the msmes so some of the entities are kvic khadi and village industries commission uh, coir board has been created national small industries corporation nsic has been created right so like that many uh, we can say statutory and not non statutory bodies have been created so these are also working for the betterment of the msme right so if we see the major policy initiatives one of the most important initiatives is creation or establishment of sidbi that is small industries development bank of india in 90s 1990 so sidbi has been created it is exclusively to give loans to the msme or enterprises that are there in the msme sector right next is launch of credit guarantee fund trust for uh, micro small and uh, micro and small enterprises in 2000 so this credit guarantee fund trust it will guarantee for the loans that have been advanced advanced to the uh, micro and small enterprises right so the msmes uh, uh, micro and small enterprises they do not uh, pro produce a collateral so the collateral will be provided this this body that is credit guarantee 
fund trust so this will provide the collateral for the loans advanced to the micro and small enterprises right next is another important initiative is introduction of prime minister's employment generation program in 2008 to generate employment opportunities through the new self employment ventures projects and micro enterprises so these are the some of the initiatives uh, i mean in the background for improvement in the msme sector however some latest initiatives are also there you try to cover those initiatives in the current affairs preparation next so another important area is formalization of msmes right so as you all know very well so the most of the msmes are they are not yet registered approximately we have seen uh 3 crore msmes are there in india however approximately 60 lakhs have been registered rest of them are not formally uh not there in the accounts of the government so formalization of msmes is also one of the important areas focused by the government right so the informal sector uh, comprises a significant portion of the msmes in india with many not registered win uh, with any statutory authority right so yesterday also uh, two to three classes before we were uh, discussing the formal and informal economy and also the organized and unorganized sector also we were discussing so the indian economy is uh, is characterized by informal we can say enterprises those who are i mean not entered into an agreement with the government or i mean many of the employers who uh, employees who are employed in the enterprises they do not have any formal contract with the employer so uh, approximately 90% Uh, of the we can say industries that are in the informal sector so this also we have seen all right so reasons for this lack of registration they vary ranging from avoidance of official paperwork to cost and bureaucracy right so however formalization is very crucial for accessing benefits such as credit and the government incentives right so impact what happening because there is lack of formalization if we see so lack of formalization hinders the sector's development and access to credit from financial institutions right so it also complicates the policy making and the development interventions that can be taken by the government right as reliable data is not available on the msmes right so if uh, registration happens the msmes come forward and they do register with the government the potential benefits are the registration provides a crucial information on business uh, facilitating policy making and development initiatives availability of a registration certificate especially after the msmed act 2006 it offers several benefits and incentives that are provided by the government so these are the uh, we can say potential benefits when an um, micro enterprises or small enterprise come for, comes forward and uh, registers officially uh, through the government provided mechanisms right so once the micro or small enterprise registers the potential benefits are uh, simplified license for uh, benefit uh, licenses approvals and uh, registrations uh, reservation policies for manufacturing and the production of the sector special considerations at international trade fees octroi benefits and a waiver of stamp duty and registration fees so all these many number of we can say incentives are there once the uh, msme we can say micro micro and small enterprises come forward and they register with the government so these are all the incentives or benefit that will be provided to them. so also uh, government has come up with another we can say initiative that is udyog aadhar so under this udyog aadhar it has simplified the registration process for msms so the introduction of udyog aadhar uh, during the 2015 it revolutionized the registration process of msms so this aadhar based electronic electronic platform it streamlined registration requiring only basic entries including pan details so 
द रजिस्ट्रेशन सर्टिफिकेट्स ऑल्सो इंक्लूड इंट्रोड्यूस इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली एट दी इंस्टेंस राइट सो इफ यू सी द डेटा एज ऑफ टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन सिक्सटी एट लैक एम एस एम एस हाउ रजिस्टर्ड थ्रू दिस सिस्टम उद्योग आधार सिस्टम राइट सो इट हैज दिस इनिशिएटिव उद्योग आधार इट हैज सिंप्लीफाइड द रेगुलेशन प्रोसेस वी कैन से राइट हाव एवर स्टिल देर आर एडिशनल रजिस्ट्रेशन सच एज शॉप्स एंड इस्टेब्लिशमेंट्स पैन एंड जी एस टी दे आर ऑफ एंड नेसेसरी फॉर कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव वी कैन से कॉम्प्लियंस सो दिस इज अबाउट द उद्योग आधार सो दिस इज सम इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द एम एस एम एस सो देर आर मेनी अदर स्कीम्स फॉर द वी कैन से इम्प्रूवमेंट इन द एम एस एम ए सेक्टर यू ट्राई टू कवर दो स्कीम्स एंड इनिशिएटिव इन द करंट अफेयर टॉपिक नाउ वी विल सी टू क्वेश्चन दट आर आज फ्रॉम दिस एरिया राइट फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इट इज आज इन दू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री ओनली दी जस्ट कंक्लूडेड एग्जाम द क्वेश्चन इज consider the following statements with reference to india so the statement one is according to the micro small and medium enterprises development act msmed act 2006 the medium enterprises are those with investments in the plant and machinery between uh, 15 crore and 25 crore so this is a wrong statement we have seen the category all right so for the medium enterprise Uh, if you see the definition, so it is uh, between ten crore and fifteen crore. So if the investment in plant and machinery, if the investment is between ten crore and fifteen crore, that is known as the medium enterprise. So the first statement is uh, incorrect statement. Next is all bank loans to micro, small, and medium enterprises qualify under the priority. sector so this is a correct statement because the, uh, the loans and advances to msme sector they are come under the priority sector right so here the correct uh, answer is on, uh, option b only statement 2 is correct the next question it is asked in 2013 uh, question is priority sector lending by banks in india constitutes the following to right first one is agriculture micro and small enterprises weaker sections so all these are loans given to all these uh, we can say sections or sectors they are they come under the priority sector priority sector so the correct option is option d all the above they come under the priority sector so when you study uh, the banking try to know about the priority sector lending also priority sector lending also because there are many categories are there they are important from the point of view of examination right so this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class see you next time until then have a good day see you